42. Natasha said I'm 42 going on 19. <laughs> I didn't say that. Yes, you did. I did not. <laughs> 42 going on 19. That's the funniest thing I've heard all day. <laughs> Why is that? Because I'm saying it. You did say that. You did say that. So we're getting the Velo build, a new BB on this bad boy. It's a 386, so right of the shop. This is very dangerous. I don't recommend doing this, carrying carb on your neck. A bit silly. Here we are, we are walking along the road, just showing you that uh, lean torso, high carb, low fat, vegan for the win. It just keeps you lean. Even the koalas, the koalas in Adelaide are vegan. It's the only place in the world koalas are vegan. The koalas in Japan, they do eat noodles. Um, but here they are vegan, and they're very abundant and friendly. A little bit shy though, a little bit camera shy. They do look for water. So uh, we're about to start the video. Uh, this is a bit of a vlog, random clip section for the interstate overseas people who love this little furry koalas. You want to see a koala? Come ride with me. I'll guarantee you. Guarantee you. If we're out in the road and you say, Harley, I want to see a koala, I'll guarantee I'll show you one. A wild koala too. All right, let's start the cleat video. All right, how to get more aero on the bike. Basically, all you do is you put your cleat, put it right back. And that will give you better time trial, better climbing power. Like Chris Frew, like Dr. Ferrari says, uh, cleat in the back and the thing. When you're digging a hole, where do you put your foot? Put it midfoot. Now, a lot of shoes aren't catered for midfoot, and I'll tell you why. Because there's toe overlap. Now, for, if you're a noob rider, and you're riding on the footpath, you get a toe overlap, you might have a crash. You might sue someone, because you're not taking responsibility for yourself. So, cycling shoes have been designed so there's no toe overlap, which is terrible for performance. Especially if you're a time trialist or a road cyclist or a mountain biker. So by having the cleat at the back, we have toe overlap, which is dangerous for noobs. If you're not a noob and you understand that, then put your cleat back. And that will make your seat height lower. You're gonna get more aero and you'll save watts. Aerodynamics is the main thing for cyclists typically. So if you're up in the wind, you know, it's an exaggeration up here, more frontal surface area, you're down the drops, boom. So if you're going from here to here, that's huge. That's huge. Uh, especially when you go 40, 50 k an hour for a long distance. So by putting our cleat in the middle, that means our, let's say my cleat was there, then our seat's going to be even lower. Let's say my cleat was at the tip. To get that seat higher, it's going to be higher, less aero. So if your cleat's midfoot, you get more power, you can hold the same power for longer because you're using your, your your, your hammies and your quads and your glute. When it's just at the front, you use most of your calves. So what I notice is my calves don't blow out like they used to. And it's your hamstrings, glutes and quads. So Chris Froome and a lot of pro riders, so you notice they've got their seat quite low and they're quite forward and their cleat is almost in the middle. So it's really, it's especially if you're a triathlete, really good, Ironman, really good. So I definitely prefer midfoot. And Natasha, put her cleats right at the back, all my girlfriends, cleats right at the back and their performance is just gonna crank it through especially with a lot of carbohydrate. So there you go. So why is it lower? Uh, well, my seat height from the, the center of the crank to the seat height the top here is 74 centimeters approximately. Now obviously it varies with seat angles and stuff, but let's say it's 74 centimeters. So I have to have 74 centimeters. And so if my heel and my legs bent like that, it means my seat has to go lower. If my legs like that, my seat has to go higher to get that 74 centimeters, if that makes sense. Does that make sense to you, Natasha, or not yet? I wasn't listening. Okay, you're not listening. No one listens to me. Um, you, you probably don't watching this video for my voice, you probably watch it from a sexy body. And now, you know, I know that's what Natasha's doing. She's behind the camera, she's just like drooling. She's got drool out of the side of her mouth right now. I'm thinking about my cats. And there's a puddle there. Yeah. But anyway, so 
just you just have that um you know you have that leg thing going on there. But anyway, so do an experiment. Move your cleats right back. Be wary of toe overlap if you're an undercarb noob, and then you're good to go. But the toe overlap's not an issue. Like you know, look how small circles I can go around. So it's just about being aware where your feet are. You know, spatial awareness, spatial awareness, and then you can go track standing like that. Track standing, no worries. This is a bit of an uneven ground here. The track standing is, is a, a non-issue. Let's, let's get a good track stand going. Here we go. It's a good track stand territory over here. You can just go over here, over a bit more over here, Natasha. We get a little, little, little track stand one-upmanship going on in here. And there you go. So it's just about having that spatial awareness. Where is your body in any space and time? And uh, <laughs> what's this all about? But seriously, it's all about being, being where are you in space and time and just having awareness. And if you do stimulants, don't do too many stimulants. Because some people do so many stims, they're just like, <laughs> they can't even pay attention. So rarely, rarely, rarely use stimulants. Use sleep, water, and sugar. That's the best. Nutrients, yeah, that's what you need. Nutri good nutrition, good fun, and uh, that's what it's about. So how to make yourself more aero? Get your cleat in the midfoot and uh, stir up some bands in your local bunch. So Natasha just told me this camera wasn't filming. Hopefully it's not too uh, windy. We put your cleats at the back. Tell us how you feel. Yeah, so it was my first effort in my new shoes today and I really like the placement of the cleats. Uh, it feels more powerful compared to my old shoes and I used to I used to notice that I get knots in my calves mm. if I go out for long rides because the cleats were further up my foot. So, um, so you prefer you feel it feels better? It feels more more solid, more powerful? Yeah, it yeah. definitely feels more solid with the cleats. Yeah, yeah. Further back. down, yeah. Yeah. So your shoes are stock, they're not technically true midfoot, but they're right back, they're slammed back. Which means that Natasha can have a, a lower seat height. Uh, better angle there, a bit more aero, and just yeah, like as you said, more more power. You feel more power from the bike. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Less soreness, less injury. That's a win. That's a win. So move your cleats as far back as they can go. You might have to drop your seat seat a little bit, and uh, you're gonna uh, feel that. And there you go. And just get a wide out pen and just mark it. It's CIA oh, stalking me. And just you know, mark it with this wide out pen. And then if you don't like it, you can move it back to where it was. Always mark it with a wide out pen. There you go, simpler stuff, and you'll be more aero. And uh, you won't need an aero, aero bike. You just uh, <laughs> using the old floggers like we are, and just <laughs> flogging people on 20 grand bikes, 10 grand bikes.